Hey guys, Spirit of the Lie here. In this video, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the Hindustanis. Now, of course, back in the day, they were called the Indians and were unique as the elephant archer civilization. But earlier this year, the dynasties of India expansion overhauled them, focusing mostly on camels and gunpowder, with a brand new unique infantry unit thrown in as well. According to the most recent stats available, they're a top tier civilization in 1v1 open maps and are among the strongest on closed maps as well, making me wonder if there might be some slight changes coming in the next patch. That great performance is partly due to a solid start in Dark Age with cheaper villagers right off the bat, though it's really in late castle or early imperial age that everything truly comes together and makes them so formidable. Let's check them out. Starting off with their team bonus, their camels and light cavalry lines have plus two attack against buildings. In this example, red is a generic civilization and green is Hindustanis. With this bonus, you can see scouts do nearly double the usual damage to palisade walls, with a single unit hacking through them almost a minute faster. Likewise, a small group of three attacking a gate can bring it down comfortably in under a minute. Early palisade walls are usually an effective deterrent against scout rushes, though in this case that's kind of debatable. For reference, men-at-arms typically destroy walls twice as fast as generic scouts, but compared to Hindustani scouts, they're only 20% faster, which isn't that big of a difference. Similarly, in Castle Age, camels typically do only roughly half the damage to buildings that knights do, though after being helped out by this bonus, Hindustani camels end up being actually quite comparable to knights. This is of course very useful to make up for the fact that Hindustanis miss the night line entirely, and at least when it comes to breaking through walls, having camels in this case doesn't put you at a massive disadvantage. Even in Imperial Age, again, this bonus still helps. Normally, a fully upgraded Paladin has 18 attack to the Imperial Camel's 12, but once you factor in the bonus damage and the Hindustani's faster camel attack, the two come out to be quite comparable against buildings. The point is, whether it's for raising a town in the late game or simply breaking in to do some damage with scouts, it's a nice little bonus to keep pressure on an opponent who's trying to turtle. Moving on to their proper Civ bonuses, the first is their most iconic, which is their villagers become progressively cheaper as you advance through the ages. In terms of total savings, it's going to depend on how many villagers you make at each stage and your general strategy, but with reasonable assumptions, you can easily come up with numbers that give savings between 1000 and 1500 food over a long game. Even in Dark Age alone, where it gives the fewest savings, you're often going to get something on the order of 80 to 120 extra food, which is already a significant leg up and approaching the same ballpark as the Lithuanian's bonus. This is an incredibly versatile bonus, not only helping if you're rushing, but also if you're just in a pure booming game on four or five town centers. It probably won't give you a villager numbers advantage per se, given that the bottleneck is usually town center work time. But these are resources freed up for extra scouts, camels, skirmishers, or staying on top of getting your techs. One way I like to think of it is that Indians can easily be a couple of farms behind an opponent and yet be no worse off, given you aren't spending as much on new villagers. Suffice to say, it's just a very solid and versatile bonus, affecting the one unit you know for a fact you're going to be making a lot of every game. Moving on, their next bonus is a relatively new one, and it's that their camel riders attack 25% faster. Just to refresh, the whole premise of camels countering knights is that their stats are worse, but because of bonus damage, they basically cancel each other out with equal numbers. The main reason people say they counter knights is just that camels cost fewer resources, so over the long run, you're theoretically in a better position. In the Hindustani's case though, with this bonus, they actually win with a third of their HP left with equal numbers, while still being cheaper of course as well. That shifts the dynamic from being a soft counter thanks to better value into a straight up hard counter, all thanks to this bonus. Their 55% online win rate against Franks and 60% win rate against Berbers really speak for themselves in how well Hindustani camels can handle even very strong night sieves. The main drawback for extra attack is just that they still take the same number of crossbow shots and are also more susceptible to town center and castle fire than knights given their lower base pierce armor. That's one department where they don't keep up with regular knights, though don't worry, as we'll see they still have a great answer to crossbows, it's just not camels. Next up, their third bonus is their gunpowder units have an extra melee and pierce armor. 
This is another recent change, moving this from previously affecting camels to now gunpowder units. That actually impacts several different ones, but honestly, I wouldn't say any of them in a major way. None of these are really intended to take a lot of direct hits, and their scariest counters often deal bonus damage that ignores armor anyway. The Elite Skirmisher's anti-archer damage against the Hand Cannoneer, for example, isn't affected, nor the anti-ship damage that largely dictates how water matchups are decided. I see this mostly as a small boost for your Hand Cannoneers when being attacked by low damage enemies, like Hazar or Crossbows, where that one extra armor can make a difference. And finally, their last bonus is that they can build the unique Caravanserai. I recently looked into this building as its own video and was impressed with the value proposition. Basically, for your own or any friendly trade carts passing within 8 tiles in any direction, they're healed by 1 HP per second and are also sped up by 20%. That means not only outrunning any melee unit in the game, making them effectively unraidable by cavalry, but it also means a slight uptick in gold generation, as they can complete their round trip faster. The building costs 175 wood and 50 stone, and you'll need 8 to 12 to cover a good trade route depending on map size, so it feels like you're putting yourself behind by an entire castle if you were to invest in them. At the same time, with an established trade line and several dozen trade cards, every player on your team is going to be recouping that stone cost every couple of minutes in the form of gold. There's some math behind it that I don't necessarily want to deep dive for overview purposes here, but I found that despite large maps needing more caravanserais, you actually have a greater return for each one added on a 4v4 map than a 2v2, even if it's only part of your trade route that you're able to cover. Being able to both boost and protect the team's trade line is a major factor in making Hindustanis a fantastic ally in drawn out team games. So that's their bonuses, which you can see collectively really span the entire game, from discounted villagers, better scout rating against walled up bases, camels that are especially good against knights, better late game trade in team games, and even a nice boost for your gunpowder units. The funny thing is, we haven't even gotten to their unique unit, which is sometimes considered one of their best options, and certainly for some civilizations like Mayans, can be very tricky to deal with. Let's move on now and take a look at the Gulam. Probably the most intuitive way to think of it would be as an Eagle Warrior, with a few notable differences. At a glance, they have pretty comparable stats, and their cost is also similarly weighted toward gold over food, which is otherwise unusual for infantry. Both units are also fast and have high pierce armor, again making them feel pretty comparable, at least in their strengths. Looking a bit deeper though, their bonus damage is actually very different. The Ghulam is far more specialized against archers, whereas in terms of bonus damage, eagles are specialized against monks, cavalry, and siege. Of course, in practice, both are quite strong against archers because of their pierce armor, but the Ghulam is just pushed a little extra in that direction. They also have a unique ability to attack units immediately behind their target, dealing half damage to them, which helps especially against bunched up units. Again, this has a ton of synergy against archers, which are often bunched up, and sometimes intentionally put against a wood line to minimize surface area, and that's where this ability really shines. Now that said, despite appearing to be a spear unit, it's not really intended to excel against cavalry. Even light cavalry and hazar can take a reasonably good trade, and against the knight line especially, they really don't hold up very well at all, and that is a major difference with the eagle warrior, which can at least hold its own. Similarly, they aren't really a good choice against most infantry, and even generic champions can walk all over them. In fact, it's probably best to think of them as an anti-archer, anti-cavalry archer, or just a raiding specialist. They're very good in that role, with their high armor, speed, bonus damage, and ability to punish units that are stacking too much. It really adds an important anti-archer option that Hindustanis would otherwise lack, given camels have such low pierce armor. I find they work really well in combination with mangonels if you're seeing a lot of crosswomen, and their quick creation time helps you reach the critical mass that you need to take some truly great engagements. Speaking of their camels though, they actually have a second unique unit, this time a unique upgrade to the heavy camel at the stable. Up front, it's a reasonably expensive upgrade at 1000 food and 500 gold, and that's actually a lower price than it was before Dynasties of India. What you get for that cost is an extra 20 HP, one more attack, and secretly a reduced training time by 2 seconds, which is frankly not an overwhelming upgrade on paper, even compared to something like the Paladin, which gives seemingly twice the improvement for only a bit higher cost. In fact, Imperial Camel isn't far off basically getting bloodlines for your camels at around 6 times that technology's usual price. Now that isn't to say the upgrade is never worth it. For reference, against paladins they take them out one attack sooner than generic units and survive one more attack, meaning there actually is a pretty noticeable difference side by side, especially compared to a Chinese or any non-Hindustani camel that isn't getting their 25% faster attack. 
Important to keep in mind is they're also still very weak to archers. With zero base pierce armor, and even with the 20 added HP, they still only take about half the arrows from an Arbalester that a Paladin does. In the same way the Ghulam is extremely specialized against archers, the Imperial Camel should likewise be used against cavalry as much as possible, as it just doesn't have the raw stats to hold up to mass archers or even good infantry units over the long run. So that gives you a good anti-archer option and a good anti-cavalry one, but what do you make if you run into a lot of infantry? You actually have a couple of decent options, but for probably your best choice we'll need to look at the unique techs. The first is Grand Trunk Road, previously called Sultans. This allows your gold sources like mining, relics, and trade units to generate 10% more of whatever they were going to. It comes with a pretty straightforward trade-off, that you theoretically want to get it as early as possible to maximize its potential, but you also have to balance that with 800 resources up front. Compared to the gold mining upgrades as well, it looks pretty expensive, and it's not until after you start factoring in sources outside of mining that the price makes more sense. This is of course on top of the caravans right already helping your trade units, giving you up to 30% more gold than usual. Personally, I think picking it up in 1v1 games is a bit more debatable, especially if you haven't grabbed a good number of relics. Their other unique tech is Shatogni, which is actually pretty cheap and gives hand cannoneers plus 2 range. Range bonuses are always difficult to quantify, but with this they outrange a fully upgraded Arbalester, Elite Skirmisher, and even Onagers without Siege Engineers, making all three of those much less dangerous counters. Of course the trade off for more range is that it also makes them a bit less accurate, as accuracy is negatively impacted by distance, though I think in this case the tech is still a very clear net positive. Of course remember this is also on top of having extra armor as well, making them overall better at both long and close range. So that's their unique units and techs, and you can see between them you have a good response to archers, cavalry, and infantry, at least in the late game once you've unlocked hand cannoneers. You wouldn't necessarily combine the Ghulam, Imperial Camel, and Hand Cannoneers at the same time of course, but depending on what your opponent's making, you should have at least one solid option to make in response. In fact, between their cheaper villagers and good late game selection, they're a pretty versatile civilization, and certainly not a one trick pony with their camels. Let's move on now though and take a look at that variety of options in their tech tree, starting with the archers. Note that they don't have the Elephant Archer, as that's just the other three Indian civs that have that available. They're also missing Arbalester, which Indians in the past had for quite some time. Cavalry archers are actually an interesting option against infantry as well, and are fully upgraded in at least Castle Age. They even have decent crossbows, giving a couple of viable options that Hindustani players will regularly use. That said, in Imperial Age the cavalry archers are eventually missing Parthian tactics, and you're also missing Arbalest, meaning both of those unit lines lose quite a bit of steam in the late game. At that point the big standout is the Hand Cannoneer, with potentially 2 extra range and its additional armor. I'd give them a B+, as you have very reasonable archer range options in both Castle and Imperial, just unfortunately with different unit types, meaning you may have to transition. Next up for infantry, like at the archery range things start out pretty well, but by the late game they're missing both halberdier and the final armor upgrade. The missing halberdier is of course because of your good camels, and while they don't officially have eagle warriors either, the ghulam actually fills a reasonably similar role, while taking less bonus damage from the militia line. Considering the final missing armor and how much more dangerous that makes enemy archers, I'm gonna go with a B at the barracks. The Ghulam itself is very strong, but taken holistically the barracks options really aren't all that impressive. Moving on to cavalry, again they have no access to the knight line, and instead that role is played, at least in part by camels. Given their extra attack speed, damage against buildings, and unique imperial upgrade though, it ends up being a pretty serviceable replacement. They're still overall cheaper than knights and paladins, and can end up being a nice option in team games especially. The light cavalry line is also fully upgraded, and considering your savings on villager costs, a food only unit is a nice fit with that bonus. For me, the stable is an A-, held back mostly by camels being more susceptible to archers and defensive buildings. Taking a look now at Siege, we didn't talk about it yet, but they have the armored elephant instead of the regular battering ram line. While Siege and Armored Elephants are more susceptible to anti-cavalry units like Halberdier, they can also fight back better against things like Villagers, and are a bit faster moving than Rams, so all in all I think they might be a bit of a net improvement on the Ram line in some situations. Other than that, Hindustanis are missing a couple of final upgrades, though between Bombard Cannon and Onager with Siege Engineers you usually have enough to work with, I'd give it a B+. Next up for the navy, nothing immediately jumps out as a significant bonus in either early or late naval games, while they're also missing some useful late game techs like fast fireship and shipwreck. 
Cheaper villagers never hurt, but for the early game, I'd say it's a pretty generic C plus for me, and late game something similar. Overall, I think water is a pretty clear weak point for the civilization as a whole. Taking a quick look now at monks, while there's no immediately obvious monk bonus at play, all the key texts are there, aside from atonement, which lets you convert enemy monks, and heresy, which is something more for units than monks anyway. Theoretically, you do have some extra gold generation from relics and a bit of an extra incentive to get them with your unique tech, and I'd say they're a solid B overall. Throwing in some monks to heal your armored elephants, camels, and hand cannoneers can be a pretty smart play, even if Hindustanis aren't typically thought of as a monk civilization. Moving on to defenses, you're actually missing quite a few things at the university, especially related to towers. On the other hand, they specialize in some good counter units though, like camels against cavalry, gulam against archers, and hand cannoneers against infantry. Remember, their trade lines are also borderline unraidable by melee units, so there's a lot outside the university making them a good sieve under pressure, and I like them enough for a B plus in defenses. And finally, for the last category of the trash units, again, I'd say they're pretty solid. The spear line is obviously lacking some text, but can still play its anti-cavalry role. And we could give some bonus points for potentially more gold generation from relics, even if it's just an extra 10%. Don't forget their hazars also have extra attack against buildings as well. And I'd say it's a B for their trash units, as in my opinion, it feels roughly average in the grand scheme of things. So to give some closing thoughts, it's hopefully becoming clear why they're one of the top performing civs at the moment in open maps. They have a strong economy on the back of their villager discount, and starting in Castle Age have a great answer to both cavalry and archer sieves with either camels or gulam respectively. In fact, it's probably not a surprise to learn, and seems like what we'd expect, to see that infantry sieves are the ones that tend to give them the most trouble. Given the current meta so often revolves around crossbow and knight sieves, at times it makes Hindustanis feel like the ultimate anti-meta sieve. Basically, the more your opponent plays into those usual strategies, the better it seems to work out for Hindustanis, though at the same time I don't think they're entirely defined by their gulam and camels. Their scouts, for example, can be a very fun and effective opening, given their strong early eco and their extra damage against walls. Not entirely obvious as well, I think their cavalry archers are also an interesting option, and are a little extra tempting given your lack of arbalester, deterring you from going all in in castle age on crossbows. Any way you slice it, you're really encouraged to step outside of the usual crossbow and knight choices, and if that's something that appeals to you, then Hindustanis are a fantastic choice, and even happen to be one of the best performing civs at the moment as well. That'll do it for this one though. Big thanks to Seb, Woodruff, John, Jockster, Kyle, Justin, James, John Paul, Samantha, and everyone else on Patreon for their amazing ongoing support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.